Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Today we're looking at a comparison between the recently released Retroid Pocket Mini and the well-known Anbinic RG Cube. These two portable handhelds are some of the most powerful available currently if you don't count the INU Pocket Micro. So the question that came up at me is which one would be better to buy. Before we discuss that, please just note that this comparison is based on extensive research of trusted reviewer feedback and technical specifications, rather than hands-on testing. While I strive for accuracy, your personal experience may vary. I do still believe that there is a lot of value in this video for you as it is jam-packed with facts found by multiple reviewers in a quick, concise format. If you found it useful, please remember to like, share and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. First up, let's take a look at the specs. And right out of the gate, the Mini has a leg up with a higher resolution OLED display and a more powerful processor. It has shown some significant performance increases over the Cube even though it has less RAM. But I will discuss that a little bit more later when we look at performance. The Mini has a 4x3 screen aspect ratio where the Cube comes in with a blocky 1x1 ratio that can be a blessing or a curse depending on your preferences. The Cube has a larger battery and more RAM and more importantly is currently available with Android 13 pre-installed. The Mini only has Android 10 available but Retroid has promised that they will be releasing an Android 13 version soon. Next, let's look at their design and ergonomics. The Retroid Pocket Mini embraces a traditional handout format with modern refinements. Its glass front panel and premium build quality gives it a high-end feel, though some users report issues with face buttons that are a bit tight and seem to scrape against the side of the device's front panel. That display offers excellent brightness and color reproduction though, so if you want a screen that makes everything pop, this one is for you. The controls are apparently also quite premium with analog sticks providing excellent range of motion and producing no cardinal snapping. This is something that the Cube is known for out of the box unfortunately, and although there is a software fix for it, it gives the Mini another advantage when comparing the two. The RG Cube also lives up to its name with its cube-like design. It features much more prominent hand grips at the back, making it less pocketable than the Mini, but arguably more comfortable to hold for some. Keep this in mind when considering which one of the two devices you would choose. With that said, let's take a quick look at performance. Here the RP Mini definitely performs noticeably better. In most benchmarks I could find, including those done by reviewers, it seems to pull out a 20-40% lead over the processor on the Cube. Both handouts can play all systems up to GameCube and most of the PS2 catalog, but the Mini does this better and smoother. Neither are perfect, and both have some PS2 games that they struggle with, but the Mini has less such instances. The 4x3 AMOLED display is regularly praised by reviewers for its awesome quality and brightness. More than one unfortunately did not like the small size at 3.7 inches, and mentioned many a game where the text was uncomfortably small. The unique 1 to 1 square aspect ratio on the Cube on the other hand proves surprisingly versatile, especially for Nintendo 3DS and DS games and vertical arcade games. On this screen there is enough space to display the double screens of the 3DS simultaneously or fill out the screen with your favourite arcade shoot 'em up. My question is whether someone will be able to coax a little bit more performance out of the chipset on the Mini as the Snapdragon 865 is famous for its overclock capability. I'm not even sure it's possible on Android, but it would add some value to it in my mind, if this is doable. To recap then, let's take a quick look at a list of pros and cons for each unit to help you decide which of them would fit your use case better. The Retroid Pocket Mini has premium build quality, an exceptional AMOLED display and superior performance. It also has a more pocketable design. It is unfortunately relatively expensive at $199, and it has that small 3.7 inch screen. You also may have some build quality issues on your unit with those face buttons being so tight. It is also limited to Android 10 features at the moment, so if you want the more updated OS, you will have to wait for Retroid to release that version. The RG Cube, on the other hand, has a unique square display perfect for DS and 3DS. It has an arguably more comfortable ergonomic design. It also has the latest Android 13 OS and it has a good value proposition at around $160. Unfortunately, it is less portable due to that grip design. It also has limited analog stick range right out of the box. It has a less powerful processor. And it only has an LCD display with less vibrant colors. No OLED here, unfortunately. What is my verdict then? Well, the choice between these devices largely depends on your priorities. The Retroid Pocket Mini offers superior raw performance and build quality in a sleeker, more portable package, making it ideal for hardcore emulation enthusiasts. 
However, its higher price point and smaller screen may give some buyers pause. The RG Cube, while less powerful on paper, offers unique advantages with its square display and ergonomic design. It should be particularly appealing for Nintendo DS, 3DS fans and those who prioritize comfort over portability. The competitive pricing also adds to its value, making it an attractive alternative. So for pure performance, awesome display quality and a premium look and feel, go with the Retroid Pocket Mini. If comfort, versatility and value matter more to you, the RG Cube might be your better bet. Just remember that the Retroid Pocket 5 is coming soon at just $20 more than the Mini, which might be worth waiting for if you're not in a hurry, as it will offer the same performance look and feel with a larger screen. If you're looking to pick up an RG Cube, please consider using my links as it will help out the channel at no cost to you. I will also leave a link for the RP Mini. If you want some more detail on the RG Cube, you can click on the link on screen now. Please just note that the light bleed issue I mentioned in that video has been resolved as far as I know. That's it for this one though. Have a nice day and I'll catch you in the next tech update.